Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and this is the unboxing of the Samsung Galaxy M20 along with a quick hands-on review. So guys, this is the box and this is probably the best Samsung phone ever launched by Samsung. I know that didn't make any sense but this is definitely the best phone Samsung has ever launched in the past few years, at least at this price segment. Now, unlike other phones, especially the J-series phones which Samsung used to sell in this price segment, this phone comes with a lot of cool features like an Infinity V display, an Exynos 7904 processor which is pretty good, a 5000mAh battery and it also supports fast charging, has Dolby Atmos and also comes with all the basic sensors. Normally to get all these things in a Samsung phone usually, or at least until last year, we had to spend at least 20 to 30,000 and get a Samsung A-series phone. Even then we would still miss out on few things. But for the first time, we are getting all of these things at a very low price and that too from Samsung. So if you're a Samsung fan and want to buy a Samsung phone, then this is something you should definitely look out for. Now that's a lot of pep talk, now let's just get on with the unboxing. By the way guys, this is not a review unit, this is not a paid promotion, I bought it with my own money on Amazon and whatever I'm talking about this phone is my personal opinion so you don't have to worry about it. Now coming to the box, this is how it looks on the back, we have the regular specifications and some more marketing information and it even says made in India which is a pretty good thing. It also says Duo, so this phone also supports dual sim with Duo LTE, that's also a pretty great thing for a Samsung phone. Now let's open it up. Now this phone is being sold exclusively on Amazon.in in two variants. Base variant is priced at 11,000 rupees for 3 gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. Next variant is priced at 13,000 rupees for 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. It is available in two colors, ocean blue and charcoal black. And I have the black color. So this is the cardboard box that we get at the top. And inside that we just get some documentation. There is no free screen guard or case provided. So this is the quick start guide and next we have the warranty card information and regional log guide. Next we have the phone itself which I'll come back to in a minute. Now this is the fast charger with a maximum output of 15 watts which is a pretty great thing to see for a phone from Samsung at just 11,000 rupees. Now this phone also has a type C port so that's another awesome thing. If you're a type C fan then here we go, this is the Type-C cable and finally over here we have the SIM card ejector. Now these are all the contents of the box, now let's just come back to the phone. So here's the phone in plastic wrapping and let's just remove it. Just like all the Samsung phones, it also comes with this plastic wrapping or stickers all around for the sides as well. Let me just remove that. So guys, this is how the phone looks on the front, pretty much completely blank and there is no Samsung branding in the front which is really appreciated. And this is how the phone looks on the back. Now this is a plastic back panel with a glass kind of a finish and just from initial impressions, it doesn't look all that premium. Like it feels better, it feels okay but not that premium. Now let's have a quick physical overview of this phone and then check out the specs. On the back, this phone has a plastic back panel with a nice mirror kind of a finish and obviously it's a fingerprint magnet and does feel slightly slippery, not as slippery as the glass built phones, but it is kind of slippery. At the top, it has the dual camera setup with a 13 megapixel primary camera with f1.9 aperture and that's followed by a 5 megapixel secondary camera with a wide angle lens with 120 degree field of view. Following that is the single LED flash, fingerprint scanner and Samsung branding on the right side. At the bottom, it has some more specifications. On the front, this phone has a massive 6.3 inch display, what Samsung calls the Infinity V display with a new water drop design with Full HD Plus resolution, 90% screen to body ratio with the new 19.5 is to 9 aspect ratio. So this phone definitely has a pretty massive display but because of the new aspect ratio, phone is actually much taller and fits pretty comfortably in a single hand. So that's a pretty good thing. Now inside this notch we have the 8 megapixel front facing camera with f2.2 aperture, sensors and above that we have the earpiece. At the bottom it is completely plain and even the bottom chin is quite small, smaller than the Redmi phones at least. Now coming to the sides, at the bottom it has a 3.5mm audio jack followed by the USB Type-C charging port, primary microphone and a mono speaker. At the top it is just the secondary microphone for noise cancellation. On the right side it has the power and volume buttons which by the way are sufficiently elevated made of plastic and have a nice clicky feel to them. 
On the left side, it has just the SIM card tray housing two nano SIM slots along with a dedicated SD card slot. Now coming to the rest of the specifications, under the hood, this phone sports an Exynos 7904 processor built using 14 nanometer architecture with two Cortex A73 cores clocked at 1.8 gigahertz and six Cortex A53 cores clocked at 1.6 gigahertz. It also has Mali G71 MP2 GPU with three gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. It will be running a custom skin version of Android called Samsung Experience version 9.5 based on Android 8.1, that's still Oreo. It will get the Android Pie update in few months. Now powering all this is a massive 5000mAh battery and as I've said earlier, this one also supports fast charging and also comes with a fast charger inside the box, which is like awesome for a Samsung phone. Now even with all these specs and a pretty massive battery, Phone has a thickness of 8.8 mm and weighs just 186 grams. In hand, it does have a bit of weight to it, but doesn't feel all that heavy. By the way guys, it also comes with all the basic sensors which includes accelerometer, fingerprint scanner, gyroscope, compass, proximity sensor and ambient sensor, which is something we rarely see in a phone from Samsung at this price segment. So overall looking at it like a regular phone, there isn't anything impressive about it, but considering all the previous Samsung phones, this is like a huge upgrade from Samsung. So that was the complete specifications and physical overview. Now let me turn on the phone and set it up and see what we get right out of the box. So guys, this is how the phone looks once we turn it on. Now let's go to settings. So out of that 3 gigabytes of RAM, we get about 1.2 gigabytes of free RAM right out of the box. And out of that 32 gigabytes of storage, we get about 22 gigabytes of free space for your user apps and user data. And if that's not sufficient for you, you can always pop in an SD card and extend the storage. Now this is the about page. This phone is running Samsung Experience version 9.5 based on Android 8.1.0, that's Oreo, with January security patch, which is actually pretty good. I mean, pretty latest. Now coming to the camera interface. Now this is the camera application. We have this knob over here to switch between the primary camera and the wide angle camera. Just click it over here to switch to the secondary wide angle camera with 120 degree field of view. Just like all the previous Samsung phones, we can swipe left or right to switch between these modes. We have the live focus mode which is portrait mode for the rear camera. And on this phone, we can change the amount of background blur effect we want, even after taking the picture. Following that is the beauty mode, pro mode, panorama mode and so on. On the right side, we have the stickers, even for the rear camera and we can even have it for the front facing camera. So these are the stickers and it simply adds these stickers to your face once you select them. Now this is the interface for the front facing camera. You also have portrait selfie. You can go to the left side, that's live focus mode for the front camera and take portrait selfies. We also get a lot of shortcuts on this phone like you can swipe up or down on the preview screen to switch between the front camera and the rear camera and you can also swipe from the shutter button to pull up this floating button. Now every time if you want to take a picture, instead of clicking this shutter button, you can always click over here. Now coming to video recording, we can record video at a maximum of full HD resolution and it even supports auto HDR for both the front and rear cameras which is a pretty good thing once again. And there is no 4K video recording or electronic image stabilization. So that's kind of expected. Now these are some sample pictures taken using the front and rear cameras. Now let's test the fingerprint scanner and face unlock features. Now I've already configured face unlock and the fingerprint scanner. So let's first test out the fingerprint scanner. So here we go. First of all, because of the flat design of the fingerprint scanner, it's kinda hard to trace, especially without a case. 
fingerprint scanner is kind of fast it is not super fast but it unlocks in around a second but finding the fingerprint scanner itself is kind of hard like if it was a bit shallow or had a little bump to it it would have been more easy but on normal usage you might get used to it and with the case it will be much better so the fingerprint scanner on this phone is definitely fast definitely usable but not super fast now let's test face unlock this is like a good lighting condition and face unlock works it is not super fast once again but it is pretty fast like it is usable by the way this is how i look for the front facing camera so in this kind of a lighting situation it is working pretty well i am still able to see the lock screen but it's pretty much usable now i've turned off all the lights so let's see if it works so even in low lighting conditions it works but it takes like 2 seconds which is pretty much usable now i'm going to try it with my eyes closed in low lighting conditions and even with my eyes closed it is unlocking the phone so there we go now let's test the speaker loudness Hi there guys, I am Mikhail from Greedy Tech and in this video I will be talking about all the best features. Now in this video I will be just talking about the best features. I already made a dedicated video talking about all the tips and tricks. So definitely check out that video. The link is in the description. Now with that said, the first best thing about Poco F1 is definitely performance. This phone supports the latest Snapdragon 8. So guys, speaker loudness on this phone is pretty good, definitely great for media consumption and it's more than sufficient for alarms and ringtones. Now coming back to the YouTube app, we can do the pin gesture to go full screen but as you can see, the top area of the phone is not being used. We get a black bar, so it's kind of waste of some screen real estate. But we might be able to fix that from settings, so let's just check it out. So to make any app go full screen, go to display and then select full screen apps and enable these toggles for the apps that you want to go full screen. Definitely do it for YouTube and games like PUBG. Now let's try playing a video. So once you enable the full screen toggle from display settings, you will be able to use YouTube and all applications in full screen, even using the area near the notch. So that's pretty great. So now we can use the entire screen and have a much more immersive experience. Now on this phone, at least as of now, I couldn't see any option to hide the notch. I might be missing it or there might not be any option to hide the notch. Now going on next, you also have the navigation gestures, so if you don't like these buttons and want navigation gestures, go to display settings then select navigation bar and select the second option, full screen gestures. And now you can use the navigation gestures. Simply swipe up from the right side to go back, swipe from the center for home, swipe from the left side for recent apps. Now these are definitely not the most intuitive gestures out there, but if you want to have a much immersive experience and want to use the gestures, definitely give it a try. Now before I conclude. These are the anti 2 and Geekbench scores. So guys, this is the new Samsung Galaxy M20. It is definitely as good as the expectation went, as good as the specifications boasted about. And is it really good for long run? We really have to test it out. But for a Samsung phone, this is definitely awesome and better than all the Samsung phone launched by Samsung for the past few years in the J series, On series and whatever series it is. So if you're a Samsung fan and want a Samsung phone under 15,000 rupees with this new Infinity V display, I can definitely suggest you this phone. But if possible, get the 4GB RAM variant. So guys, what do you think about this phone? Do you think this is gonna be the Redmi killer or the Redmi Note series killer? Real me killer? Let me know by commenting below this video and if you are planning to buy this phone, please use the link in the description. It always helps the channel and if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. 
I am Nikhil from Real Tech signing off. Have a nice day.